Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Conversations with Selwyn. Um, as you can see, uh, we're in our element here around musical instruments, and I'm here with my good friend Phil Miller. Yes, sir. For, thank you so much for, for doing this and, thank you for and being able to talk to us today. Um, guys, let me just tell you, Phil is one of my all time favorite musicians. Just growing up, listening to him play. Um, as you can see, he's on, he's on the keys now, but he's a multi-instrumentalist and um, just growing up playing in church together over the years, I just really respected his musicianship, his ability to learn a song to a T. Um, he's just great. And I know he hates people talking about him like that, yes, but, but it's, it's the truth. <laughs> yes, I do. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth, man. Um, so, Phil... Um, we want to learn a, bit, a little bit about you and some of the insights that you have on music ministry, music industry. Um, how long you've, have you been playing? Wow. Um, first, let me say thank you again. You got it. Uh, for uh, thinking of me and asking me to be here. It's Absolutely. Definitely a, always a pleasure to, uh, to sit with you in any uh, occasion and element. Um, how long have I been playing? Wow. I've literally been playing pretty much all of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I started playing drums when I was two. Wow. Um, I was, you know, trained formally yeah. in music uh, for a little while. I think I started drum lessons when I was eight or nine, and I think that lasted for like six months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I got it now, I can the, do it. The, the, uh, the, the teacher that I sat with, I'll never forget him, Bob O'Connor at Lou Rose Music Center in Edison, New Jersey. Shout out to Bob. Um, I don't know, even know if he's living <laughs> at all, um, but it was it was that long ago. He told my parents, like, yeah, you're wasting your money. <laughs> wow. Um, but I've uh, been playing drums all my life. Uh, started as a late bloomer uh, mm -hmm. playing keys. Mm -hmm. um, I started really tackling the keyboards probably at 14, 15 years old. Wow. Um, but growing up in school, I played the cello in the fifth grade. Hated it because I had to lug it to school every day. Oh, wow, yeah. And I walked to school. Oh. Um, so I hated that. I put that down. <laughs> and I started playing saxophone uh -huh. um, between the sixth grade and right around the 11th grade. Okay. By the time I was done with it, I was able to play all four, soprano, alto, tenor, and baritone. Oh, my goodness. Um Again, uh, started playing keys late around mm -hmm. 15, 16. Mm -hmm. um, then I picked up bass at 19. Mm. Um, so just kind of felt my way around the, the traditional rhythm section. Yeah. Uh, when did to, you start playing organ? Uh, oh, wow. Probably right around the same time. Okay. Uh, right, right around 16 years old, mm -hmm. um, trying to learn all the different nuances of yeah. of you know, the instrument and being in church and being able to uh, really kind of facilitate a service. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, just just kind of really acclimating myself, having grown up in church all my life. Right. Um, right. My mother was the choir director and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. You know, the typical church musician. In the church of God. In church of God. That's right. Yeah, church of God. <laughs> church of God uh, kids right here. Yeah, growing up, Long Branch Church of God. Um, Shout out to Long Branch. Bishop. Bishop Richard Worsley, <laughs> uh, my pastor growing up. Yeah. Um, so it's it's been a, I'm a lifer. Yeah. I'm a lifer. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, nothing's changing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing's changing. Uh, so yeah, that's, yeah, I've, I've been playing. Yeah. That's an awesome that. journey, man. Awesome journey. And um, guys, I'm telling you, you we're going to get into more about him and uh, bands that he's played for. Um do a little bit of research on him because I'm telling you, he's a, a, an accomplished musician, uh, very experienced, and um, you'll get to hear some of the music that he's worked on um, and arranged with, you know, all of that stuff. So let's let's get into that right away. Like, give us a name of some of the bands and artists that you've played for over the years. Wow. Um, bands and artists. Wow. I've, uh, I've played for... Uh, Alvin Slaughter. Yeah. I was his music director for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Love him. Love mm -hmm. him. Love him. Love him. Yeah, um, Alvin's awesome. Uh, 
I've served with you, uh, with Nancy Jackson Johnson. That's right. Um, Fresh Wind. Fresh Wind. <laughs> that was that was absolutely fun. That was an experience. That man. was dope. That it was, was dope. absolutely fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bruce Parham. Oh uh, wow, uh, Hezekiah Walker. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my pastor. Uh, man, uh, Dorothy Norwood, yeah. Al Pacino Walker, um, Donald Malloy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we played for Dorothy Norwood together yeah, one time yeah, in Trenton. In Trenton, yeah, yep. that's right. Uh, oh man, Milton Bigham, um, man, mm-hmm. um, the Judds. Um, oh, start name dropping. <laughs> wow, I auditioned for Mitten Condition. Okay, yeah. Um, my all-time favorite band. Yeah. Um, oh. Love Recently played for Ruben Studdard, um, mm-hmm. Johnny Gill, mm-hmm. um, uh, Craig Hayes, CC Winans, Marvin Winans. Mm-hmm. Um, man, uh, it's it's been a few people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure I'm missing a few. Um, but uh, Crystal Aiken, mm-hmm. um, man. Well, your your career um, spans not only the gospel music industry, but also the mainstream industry as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually playing drums for a couple of uh, 70s funk artists mm-hmm. uh, right now, um, Instant Funk. Um, for those old heads that can go back to the 70s, mm-hmm. if you remember this uh, hit song, uh, I Got My Mind Made Up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm playing yeah. for them. Okay, wow. Um, a Philly artist named Dexter Wanzell. Mm-hmm. Um, playing for him as well um there's an instrumental band you're also playing for. yes yeah. renaissance jazz band mm-hmm. uh, friends of mine uh that we formed a band uh maybe about three years ago three four years ago awesome um so we've uh you know and then a lot of local artists i've played for mm-hmm. um wow so yeah so it's, it's, it's a few people you've got a lot of experience under your belt and um, I'm sure you could tell us, sit here and tell us a bunch of stories about the industry, um, both in gospel music and also the mainstream industry. But give us a little bit of insight into the good, the bad and the ugly and kind of like what's the same crossing wow. over industries. Um, the good, the bad and the ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, there you would think um, quite naturally that there are. Um, a lot of similarities yeah uh between the genres you know between the arenas yeah um of music um the good is that you know you you get to be around a bunch of great people mm-hmm. um great artists you know great musicians you get to glean um from several different experiences yeah um you get to improve your craft um, you get to um, get exposure and and improve upon your your ability to um, see a different parameter mm-hmm. of of the industry from an audience point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to um, you get to feel the response from people. Um, what what I've grown to appreciate about music is that no matter what genre you yeah. play, yeah. it's very much a spiritual thing. Yeah, um, it's it's connected to the soul. It's connected to the, your spirit, mm-hmm. and um, it it gives you the ability um, to kind of manipulate feelings. Okay, um, which kind of ties into the bad yeah um, yeah the ugly yeah because uh, (laughs) let's talk about that (laughs) because you can manipulate uh, feelings and um cause people to think whatever you want Mm -hmm. by whatever you play Mm -hmm. um because it's such a universal language Mm -hmm. um you have um this ability that very few people have in the world to alter yeah um, real talk and, you know <laughs> to alter someone's mindset mm-hmm. um and 
you know, that again, that can be good, bad, and ugly. Right. All at the same time, mm-hmm. depending on what it is you're right. playing right. and what message you're sending. Um, and what and decisions follow those mindsets. Right. Yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. um, which kind of makes me grateful uh, for my upbringing. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if, how deep you want to get, um, <laughs> but uh, um, I'm very grateful um, for the fact that I was brought up in God. Yeah. Not just in church. Right. But I was brought up in God. Yes. Um, yeah. In Christ. You know, it's the fact that, that um, you know, we carry this ability, this God given ability to change atmospheres mm-hmm. and to, um, to allow people to uh, come in one way and leave another. Yes. Um, without saying a word. Yeah. Really. Mm-hmm. Um, I often tell people that being a good musician is like being a good DJ. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. that's true. Knowing what to play and when to play it. When to play it, um, that's right. If you've, if you've ever experienced a good party, mm-hmm. um, you know, when the DJ throws on that one song and everybody's <laughs> like, ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's having that ability of knowing not just what to play, but when to play it. Yeah. Um, and it's cliche, but timing really is everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really grateful um, for my upbringing because it, it allows you to kind of experience the, the response of people yeah. to what you're playing. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, the, the bad and the ugly right. um, is kind of the same thing. Mm-hmm. You, you have this ability to, you know, kind of play with people's emotions yeah. and kind of uh, almost make it uh, your own puppet yeah. um, and, and pull whatever string you decide to pull. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are, you know, some of the, the business aspects of music. Yeah. Um, um, having been, you know, having been doing this for a career for the last 26 years. Wow. Um, you, you run into the sharks and the leeches (laughs) and the snakes, you know, people who, um, take advantage of you and, Mm -hmm. you know, don't exactly keep your word. Right. Um, and, uh, it's, you know, especially in church, <laughs> you would think, you know, integrity. Wait, we it, can't say that. Uh, the, can we say that? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, you can. You should. <laughs> you would oh, think man. you would think uh, that integrity would be paramount. Um, but some people take advantage of people. Yeah. In the name of God. Mm. Um, and it leaves. It leaves a lot of um, hurt and distrust. Yes. Um, leaves people, you know, ambiguous and apprehensive to even deal in the whole church arena when it comes to uh, business. Mm. You know, um, no, not just from a musical standpoint, but from any from any standpoint. standpoint yeah. It, it leaves people um, a little apprehensive, um, and uh, it's it, it gets a little difficult. Um, sometimes Mm -hmm. when you have to uh, take certain measures in order to make sure business is handled. Yeah. Um, Because you kind of expect um, the institution of the church to operate on a certain level of integrity and trustworthiness and also care, you know, that they care about you as an individual and care about your future, um, your gift, Mm-hmm. not wanting to abuse that or misuse it in any way, you know. So I, I definitely get it. I, de- I definitely get it. I'm sure we have similar stories. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. any any musician could tell you, yeah. um, you know, a certain story and you can immediately relate to it. Immediately. Um, and it's a shame mm-hmm. uh, that you would have to um, implement uh, again, secular measures mm-hmm. into Christian settings. And yeah, the 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 institution of contracts and yeah, 
you know, um, but, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, when in business, be as men, being, right. being prudent in right. your business. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that prudence uh, calls for certain legalities. Yeah, it requires to, it. You know, yeah. to mm -hmm. be in place. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, uh, a contract not only binds you to your agreement with me, it also binds me to my agreement with you. Right. Um, mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't hold you responsible to your fiduciary right. responsibility to me. It right. holds me responsible to my requirements. Yeah. Preachers call mm -hmm. that covenant. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it holds me responsible to my responsibilities to you. Mm -hmm. Um, my integrity to show up on time and to be prepared mm -hmm. and to be professional. Mm -hmm. That's another word that's taboo in church. Right. To be professional. Right. Um, uh, to know what I'm doing when I get there, um, to, uh, be integral in my attitude and my conduct. Mm -hmm. Um, what I've learned over the years is that people, people don't hire you for your ability to chop into riff and to do all these crazy chord progressions and, mm. and how many, how many, uh, rhythmic licks you can do in an eight, in an eight mar an eight bar, uh, phrase, right. you know, People hire professionalism. Mm -hmm. People hire integrity. Mm. People hire uh, preparation. Yeah, you know they they don't hire your necess necessarily hire your musical ability. They hire your ability to be um, level headed. Yeah, um, not to be um, not to be a knucklehead mm -hmm. um, when you go out somewhere, um, especially when you're with an artist right um, on any level on any platform um, right because what you have to realize is that when you're somewhere with an artist um, you're representing that artist that's right so they're not going to say oh uh, Phil Miller was acting crazy <laughs> you know you know somewhere and such and such they'll say oh Alvin Slaughter's music director right Right. You know. <laughs> now it casts a bad shadow. You know, it casts a pejorative light on him. Right. You right. know, which, you know, leads to, you know, uh, reprimand, firing. Mm -hmm. um, Loss of opportunities. Absolutely. You know. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, musicians, good musicians now, are really a dime a dozen. Yeah. You know, there are, there are beasts everywhere. Right. Um, there are people who are phenomenal sitting at home. Mm, yeah. Um, but uh, again, you know, it's, you know, it's your integrity that's hired. And that's, um, you know, your ability gets you in, your, in the door, but your character keeps you there. That's right. And um, I think that's what's being missed um, nowadays. Um, there's, an, there's a lack of people um, pulling people aside like they used to do us. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I do often is I am grateful to the people that I've learned from mm -hmm. growing up mm -hmm. um, on any level, people that you know, people that you don't know, um, that I have been able to glean from. Yes. Um, that has taken the time to show me not just musical things, but uh, some life principles character yeah um, some life principle mm -hmm. um one uh, one gentleman in particular that's close to us mm -hmm. uh, is james poiser oh yeah um who uh shout is, out to uncle james is uh <laughs> the, the big homie the big bro yep um who is Trend serving yep. who is currently serving as one of the keyboard players for the roots and mm -hmm. you can see him nightly mm -hmm. on jimmy fallon um i've known james wow since i had to have been like 12, 13 years old. Yeah. I always love um, the way he puts things together uh, musically. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely. Phenomenal. He, he is he is one of one of my heroes. Mm -hmm. Um but then there are people that, you know, not everybody knows, like Sean Denson. And, uh, oh yeah. You know, it's we know him. Pocket drummer. You know. Um, Solid drummer. Your uh <laughs> your cousin, Morris Scott. Morris Scott. Um and then there's very people like, skilled, very uh, skilled players, man. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, people like Charles Bush from New Brunswick, um, who actually gave me 
my first real working gig. Okay. Um, I was 12 years old, and he was uh, going on tour uh, with uh, my former pastor and his brother, Mm -hmm. uh, the Jenkins brothers. Mm -hmm. Uh, They won McDonald's Gospel Fest. Oh, um, yeah. In 1986. (laughs) Yeah. I was 12. Yeah. And there was a a community choir that he was playing for, Central Jersey Community Choir. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother knew the director. And I've been watching Charlie play uh, growing up, and he actually let me work the gig for him. Wow. So (laughs) that was actually my first working gig. What did you play for? I played drums. Okay. I played drums. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It was wonderful. We got to open up for a lot of different people. Like my, the one concert that I will never forget is opening up for a New Jersey Mass Choir, Mm -hmm. Donnie Harper and all of them. It was just phenomenal, you know, just uh, getting a chance to meet meet him and meet some of the musicians. I Mm -hmm. remember sitting behind uh, the drummer the whole night and, you know, we were able to, you know, sit and talk and, Mm It's just wonderful, wonderful experience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, people, you know, people like that that uh, that was able to uh, allow me to glean from them. Right. Um, it's it's wonderful, and I and I see there's a lack of that today. Yeah. Um, with some of the younger uh, generation, um, they they don't have, I think. The same respect, okay. if I could, if I could say that, yeah. uh, for those who have paved the way mm-hmm. before them, like yeah. we did. Yeah, um, they're everybody's. Everybody's calling them a beast. <laughs> right, right, right. It's, it's, it's kind of this, this, this term that has gotten way too out of control yeah it's out Um, of control uh, and it's used way too loosely i feel like we we had heroes they have uh they have competitors yeah you know that because we grew up admiring someone and emulating their style um uh like some of the names you mentioned before um morris scott Maurice Huggins. Maurice, wow, God bless him. He taught me how to play the organ. Yeah, man. And poured so much, you know, into me just as a musician. Yeah. You know, so I know exactly what you're talking about. And then watching cats like James, those were our heroes. Yes. So when we, over the years, learned how to do what they do and try to emulate the things that we do, um, it's not a, a notch on the belt to say, oh, I'm as good as or I'm half as good, I'm almost there by next year, you know, people should be talking to me, should be talking to, you know, it's not about that, you yeah, know. Right. We, got, we have to develop that, that sense of, um, you said respect, I think admiration, um, and also follow their character, not just their Absolutely. skill. Absolutely, you know? Absolutely. And um, um, yeah. Because a lot of the guys that I mentioned, um, they're family men. Yeah. Um, uh, some of them are preachers and ministers, mm-hmm. and, um, uh, but most importantly, uh, beyond all that, they're they're just all around good guys. Yeah, um, that you can approach anywhere yeah. at any time, mm-hmm. um, and have a conversation like have, this. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'll never forget um, the time we were at the Northeast Regional Fellowship, and James and PJ Morgan mm-hmm. was in the lobby. Mm-hmm on the baby grand piano mm-hmm. and they were just trading back and forth for mm-hmm. hours. And mm. I just remember sitting there just like, <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, watching people, you know, even when the man, when Doobie Powell yeah. came. And, Doobie's another one, man. Uh, man, he is, wow. he is like, that's another guy who plays everything mm-hmm. and, and just mm-hmm. phenomenal. Um, so it's, it's, being able to watch those guys from near and far, even, you know, being here, um, having a chance to uh, serve with uh, people like Gerald Hayward. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, I, I see Gerald every Sunday. And it's like, you know, like, oh, you you play with Gerald? It's like, what's it like? You know, I, I see him every Sunday. Yeah. You know, he's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but. Yeah. Um, he's always going to be who he is. Yeah. And, you know, and he's yeah. been and he's been consistently. Yeah. On that level. For, Sist- consistently great. Oh, you know, over the last 20 mm-hmm. plus years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people would see that as, you know, awe inspiring. You know, but, you know, when they talk about it, I get to, you know, kind of look at it from their po- uh, point of view mm-hmm. and then kind of flip it to mine. It's like, you know, I'm, I sit with greatness. Yeah. You know, every week, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, again, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not, you know, uh, ungrateful or I'm not um, naive to the fact that I have that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um sit with you um to to know you whatever um, you know i <laughs> no seriously i whatever. i i uh i i don't take that for granted you know being able to have friends like you and brian williams and pablo claudio and oh man you know, these you know real you know, dudes these, excellent these musicians guys real dudes world class world class guys yeah. just world class men mm-hmm. um you know, musically off the instruments or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I just I'm just grateful to be able to learn from you know anyone mm-hmm. you know that that uh, allows me to make me better. Yeah, you know? I think that's so important. That, that that is so important. So tell us a little bit about your music school. Yeah, um, I have been teaching privately for the last maybe 16 years. Hmm. Um, I started teaching uh, with Jenkins Brothers Music Development Center yes. in Hamilton. Yes. Um, I have since uh, kind of branched out on my own. I've taught um, at the Professional Center of the Arts in uh, Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Awesome. Um, that was a phenomenal experience mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also inspired me to do something on my own. Uh, I, I have founded the uh, Virtual Music Institute, mm. um, which uh, covers uh, private lessons for um, beginner and intermediate piano, um, beginner and intermediate drums, mm-hmm. um, but also it covers music theory. Mm-hmm. Um, the great thing about it is that it's not only it can not only be one on one. Private lessons, but it's also primarily online based. Okay. Um, so it allows me to kind of meet you where you are. Yeah, it's very convenient. Um, I have uh, some personal visionary goals, which I am uh, in school uh, getting uh, my degree in instructional design, mm-hmm. um, which uh, covers. Uh, the building of curriculums, the use of ebooks and you know online learning and all that good stuff mm-hmm. um, because uh, I want to be able to offer my program to private and charter schools yeah uh, because we see the funding uh, for the arts uh, being depleted in the public school system that is a fact um, uh, so I want to it's be a able tragedy to, it's happening. it's it's it is a disgrace mm-hmm. because you're you're um, you're not feeding the opportunity for all these different kids who are not super duper scholars and who are not super duper athletes. Right. But you're taking away this avenue that kind of keeps them out of trouble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, my desire is to offer that um, to private and charter schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and being that it's online based, yeah, I don't have to kind of limit myself to just one institution. Right. I can, Give it to a hundred. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they exactly. Could, they can know, run with it. They could. They could employ mm-hmm. that particular mm-hmm. uh, asset. Uh, so you know, not just uh, with the playing opportunities, but also expanding on my teaching opportunities as well mm. uh, to kind of uh, add to um, this this growing population of musicians and singers and actors and writers and mm-hmm. all that good stuff to kind of give them the same opportunity to expand on their their gifts it's that were gonna be to me. it's gonna be an awesome asset to to the music industry and community of musicians that you know coming mm-hmm. up it's gonna, i think it's gonna be very instrumental for them yeah yeah that's awesome um so where can folks 
um, learn more about you? You have a website or your social network information? Uh, social network, um, Facebook, Phil Miller, mm-hmm. real simple. Um, I do have a virtual music institute mm-hmm. uh, page on Facebook as well. Okay, good. Um, Instagram, Phil Miller 74. Mm-hmm. Um, I am working on uh, actually revamping my website uh, as we speak, kind of adding some things okay. and, and making it a little bit more professional looking, Yeah, um, updating it and all that good stuff. So you'll see a lot of coming soon things <laughs> um, on my, uh, like my Facebook and Instagram. Uh, what is my Twitter page? <laughs> 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 um, so, uh, yeah, so Phil Miller 74, mm-hmm. uh, all the way. Um, go VMI mm-hmm. on Twitter at okay. Go VMI. Okay. Um, so it's, uh, you can find me pretty well. Phil, this has been an absolute pleasure to do this interview with you. Pleasure's mine. And um, guys, I want you to leave some comments for Phil. Um, a lot of you know him, and some of you have met him for the first time today on, on, in this conversation. Um, but if you have any questions for him, if you're an upcoming musician um, or know someone that is and you want them to see this video and you think it's going to be helpful and um, instructional for them, um, by all means, hit the share button and send it to them. All right, guys? Sure, absolutely. I have, I have no questions. <laughs> no questions, no problems. You know, answering questions, inbox me, doesn't matter. That's Absolutely. Cool. We'll tag him and also put all of his website information up on the screen for you. But guys, thanks for listening in and being here for another conversation with Selwyn. We'll see you next time. Conversations with Selwyn.